oh boy, there is a lot going on. And I'm like, girl, what are you doing? The competition is fierce. Hello, my beautiful light brights. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neil Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen living in Belgium. And if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Today, we are playing my favorite game, Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of RuPaul's Drag Race UK vs. The World, Season 2, Episode 1, and let you know if the looks are fab and fabulous or drab and awful. Today, we will be looking at the premiere episode, which means we are not getting one. Not two, but three looks. We will be looking at their entrance looks. We will be looking at their talent show looks. And we will be looking at their first runway looks. So we got a lot of looks. So first, let's get into these entrance looks. First up, we have Tia Coffee. And Tia Coffee is coming in in this head to toe animal print with a lot of rhinestones and big hair. This is clearly a reference to her entrance look from her original season, and so I love the little callback. It is both referential, but elevated. She says, I'm coming back, and I'm coming back with a 2.0 version, and this is how I think you do a general entrance looks. It is showing personality, but it is also uh, showcasing what people know of you, but also showing you what you're gonna be doing differently this season. It's definitely giving me a little bit of Scary Spice, it's definitely giving me a little bit of RuPaul, and a lot of Tia Coffee. And that is why she is definitely getting a bab. Next to walk in from season two of Drag Race Down Under, it's Hannah Conda. Hannah Conda is coming out in this beautiful sea foam dress with all of the embroideries all over her chest and shoulders. And she's paired it with this sort of crown made of the same embroidery, basically to tell you she is here to snatch that crown. This outfit is gorgeous. This feels like Hanaconda and it definitely feels elevated. Honestly, I'm gonna say this is so much better than what she showed in her promo look, uh, which if you watch my last episode, I kind of really didn't love that one, but this one feels so much more on point. It shows personality, but it also shows elevation and it shows glamour. All in all, it was very well done. So for Miss Hanaconda, she is definitely getting a fab. Next up, from season one of Drag Race España, it's Arancha Castilla-La Mancha. And Arancha is coming out in this yellow bodysuit with these black scratch marks. She's paired up with this frilly skirt and this kind of Y2K hair. Oh boy. There is a lot going on. First, let's start with the positives. The first positive is that Arancha has turned it up. Arancha on her season was uh, not necessarily the most glamorous and she was definitely red to fill for it. So she is definitely coming up with a huge glow up and that's exactly what I wanna be seeing when somebody comes back to like an all-star season, which I personally consider this one to be. So this is definitely a huge improvement for her. Now let's talk about the outfit. There is a lot going on and a lot of pieces that I don't know if they all go together. There's this bodysuit and this dress and they are in completely different fabrics and completely different colors. They really do feel like they come from two different uh, outfits that she pushed together. The bodysuit definitely feels like more of a performance bodysuit with these like tiger stripes on her. It's definitely giving fierce, ferocious, uh, I'm gonna do some sort of dance move, and the flowy skirt definitely feels like it comes from another piece altogether, uh, maybe something a little bit more elegant. The hair is definitely giving me a little bit of that Y2K essence. You could potentially say that it matches with the dress, but then all she goes ahead and she pairs it with a boot, but not like a high heel sexy boot, like a combat boot. And I'm like, girl, what are you doing? Personally, I think this is a little bit of a mess. What I would have done differently is actually made that bodysuit in a white instead of a yellow and rhinestone the shit out of it and then change the boot for a like high heel boot and then it would have all worked for me. But because she did decided to do these iterations with these accessories, I can't really forgive it. And that's why I'm gonna have to go with a soft drab. <laughs> Next, from 
RuPaul's Drag Race USA Season 10 and All Stars 5, it's Mayhem Miller. Mayhem is coming out in this head to toe red sequence number. She's got like this red jumpsuit with this red jacket and this red headpiece. She's pairing it with red jewelry, red lip, and even a red shoe. Now, the thing about Mayhem is that she is a seasoned queen and knows what she's doing and you can see it in this outfit. This outfit is meticulously put together and you can see that every little detail on this outfit was thought through. Now is this outfit my specific style? Absolutely not. But can I appreciate it for the amount of effort and thought that went into it? Absolutely. The attention to detail is next level. She's got every piece down to her little fingernails done in this one color. The amount of time that goes into planning something like this is incredible considering you have to talk to hairstylists, you gotta talk to a nail stylist, you gotta talk to, I mean, I couldn't even think of how many different people you gotta talk to just to get something like this put together. All in all, it is so smart, so intelligent, and she's coming to show you that she is in it for the competition, baby. All in all, for Mayhem Miller, it is 100% gonna be a fun. Next up, from RuPaul's Drag Race UK season three, it's Theresa May. And Theresa May is coming out in this blue and green flame dress with this big tulle cape and these long fingernails and this black hair. Oh my God, this is Theresa May 2.0. Theresa May was sometimes known as a little bit of a campier queen, but this time she is showing that she is not only campy, but she is fashion. This definitely feels like Theresa's aesthetic, but elevated to the next level. It feels like she has a better understanding of who she is and who she is as a drag queen and put some money behind it to really give you the 2.0. I love this color combination together, this blue and this green. All in all, I can't really fault it and I think she looks excellent. And that is why for Theresa May, she is definitely gonna get a fab. Next up, from Drag Race France season one, it's La Grande Dame. And La Grande Dame is coming in in this art inspired dress with matching thigh high boots. She's paired it with blonde hair and is looking like a supermodel. Now, if you're a Drag Race fan like I am, you notice that this is the exact same look as she wore on her season. And I don't know how I feel about it. On one hand, I think that it's good to come out in an outfit that is referential to your past season. So she did that with this outfit. Additionally, the UK slash international audience that is watching this maybe didn't watch her original season. So this outfit is new to the larger audience. That being said, it is the exact same look and I've seen it before. So I wish she would have taken the idea and elevated it somehow done a 2.0 version. Maybe it had additional crystals. Maybe she turned it into a long dress instead of a short dress, or maybe she put gloves. I don't know. I just feel like it needed to be switched up somehow, not give us the exact same look. At the same time, this is the only look that's not being judged, and it is very expensive to get on Drag Race, and I'm sure that uh, that outfit is not cheap in any way. So you kind of do want to get multiple uses out of it. I just don't know if you want to get two uses on TV shows out of it. I am wondering if this was done on purpose or by accident. It's very possible that one of her outfits didn't come in. Additionally, we know that La Grande Dame between taping this season and Phil initiating her last season had a very short time period. So it's also possible that she also ran out of money in between those because La Grande Dame is a fashion queen and, I'm, and she spends money on her drag. All in all, I love the outfit, I love the look. And because I've seen it before, it's not that inspirational for me. I probably would have fabbed it the first time I saw it on Drag Race France. Definitely gonna give it a drab this time. Next up, from Drag Race Philippines season one, it's Marina Summers. And Marina Summers is coming out in this sort of goldy copper uh, dress with this hood and she pulls out this sword. First things first, Marina Summers is the only queen on this season who I have not watched the previous season. I have a lot of Drag Race Philippines fans that are on my channel and they have been hyping me up about how great Marina Summers is. So I was expecting big things. When she came out in this dress, I was like, cute. It's a very fine dress. Because of all the praise that she's been getting online, I was expecting 
a lot more. I also don't understand the reference. She pulls out the sword and she makes this line about uh, conquering. And I'm wondering, is this a reference to her original season? Am I missing something? I feel like I am. And if you know what it is that I am missing, please leave a comment down below and educate a bitch because I love to find out things I didn't know. All in all, it's a fine dress. It's not bad, it's not great. I was expecting more from Miss Marina, but I would say it's good enough to get a soft back. Next up from RuPaul's Drag Race season four, it's Jomper's Blonde. And Jomper's Blonde is coming out in this black and green Irish jig attire. She's paired it with this snake hair and a top hat. She's definitely referencing her Irish heritage with the story of St. Patrick and the snakes. And I think that is so genius that she comes out with such a strong reference to her heritage and a strong concept. I will say that uh, the outfit itself is Okay, it's nothing special, uh, it's nothing grand, but it works for the story and the message she wants to give. On top of it, she's paired it with this amazing hair. I've never seen anything like it. I want it, it looks fantastic. And you can see that she's really thinking things through. On her original season, she always was saying that she was the fashion queen and she did come off a little bit more of the campier queen. And this season she comes out and she's definitely playing on that where she's giving you a little bit of fashion and a little bit of camp. And I love it. I feel like with this outfit alone, Jombers is coming in and walking right into her best version of herself. And if this is any indication of what she's gonna bring this season, I am super excited. All in all, I think this is a very strong entrance outfit and that is why she is getting a bag. Next up, from Drag Race Holland season two, it's Miss Keita Minaj. And Keita Minaj is coming in in this head to toe cheetah print dress. She's paired up with these long black gloves and this cheetah print headpiece. Immediately you can tell that it is giving those spooky witch vibes that Kada is known for. It's uh, a little bit fashion and also a, a little bit creepy. I love what she's did with the, the little hands and with the headpiece. Now the part that threw me off a little bit is the use of cheetah print. Uh, I don't necessarily associate Keita with cheetah print so this wouldn't have been my first choice of uh, print. That being said, the garment is meticulously made and fits her like a glove. And she's definitely coming out making a big impact with this outfit, which I think you kind of need to do as a first outfit in general. And she did that. All in all, I love it. And I'm so excited to see Kada back on this season. And it is definitely going to be a fab from me. Next up from RuPaul's Drag Race USA, Season 11 and All-Star 6, it's Miss Scarlet Envy. And Miss Scarlet Envy is coming out in this little short uh, red dress with some feathered detailing and big black hair. First, I think it is so smart for her to have chosen red as an entrance outfit. Red playing on the idea of Scarlet, Scarlet being the color red, really works super strong. It ties into her name. So for those people who don't know her, it is something for her to remember. But girl, if you don't know her, this is her third time competing. So I'm pretty sure everybody knows her. I also do like that this is a little bit of a different silhouette uh, for Miss Scarlet. Scarlet, I usually see her with longer dresses. So I like to see her in this like short skirt as well as it's an entrance outfit. So it doesn't need to be the biggest, uh, most glamorous outfit. You could just do a really cool outfit and a real cool outfit she did. It looks very polished. It looks very put together and all of the details work together. I wish there was a little bit more of a concept or a little bit something referential to her past seasons and past looks. I think that would have just taken it up an extra notch. But that being said, I love this outfit from head to toe and it is definitely going to be a bag. Next up from RuPaul's Drag Race UK season one, it's Gothy Kendall. And Gothy Kendall is coming out in this tiger corseted top, this long flowy skirt, and this big black hair. This is a reference to her raw tiger moment where she got kicked out on her season. So I love that she's referencing some of her past looks. On top of it, she's done it in this more glamorous haute couture way uh, with this beautiful corset and beautiful dress. Now the only issue I have is that I've already seen this 
style of outfit on Miss Gothic Kendall several times. We saw it on her Instagram, we saw it on her promo look, and now we're seeing it on her entrance look. It is becoming a little bit repetitive. They are looking like a little bit carbon copies of each other, but she does look really good in this silhouette, and the silhouette is quite original. It's almost becoming a little bit iconic for her, so I get why she did it. All in all, I think this is a strong start for her. She looks great, and she's being referential, and as being the first eliminated queen on the first season of the UK edition, she has a lot to prove, and she's showing that she's here to play. All in all, she looks fab. And that's it for the entrance looks of this season. I basically fabbed every single one of these looks, so the competition is fierce. I'm so excited to see what's gonna happen. But that's enough about the entrance looks. Now let's get into the talent show. For the talent show, we will be getting the looks and not the performance itself. Remember, this is a fashion review show. We will be looking at how the outfit works for the talent. Does it help the talent or does it take away from the talent? Now that you know the rules, let's get into it. First up, it's Miss Theresa May. And Theresa May is coming out singing an original song. She starts off the performance wearing this sequence jacket and this little headscarf. The jacket looks super elegant and super expensive. It is definitely rhinestone to the gods and you definitely know that it is going to be a reveal and I love a good reveal in a performance. As she starts singing, she rips off her headscarf to reveal horns when she says the word devil and I'm like, genius mama, I didn't see this one coming and I love when you don't see a reveal coming. Yes, potentially she was gonna take off her headscarf, but I didn't know the song, so I didn't know the word devil was coming. And the fact that she paired devil with the wig is such a smart move and goes to show that she thought about this performance as an entirety. As she's performing, she rips off her jacket to do this full bodysuit. This one shocked me a little bit because I was expecting her to complete her devil look and maybe come out in a full red flame uh, bodysuit, but instead she decided to go still with this color blocking technique. Personally, I didn't think that this was enough of a difference from her jacket to this outfit because it had a lot of the same patterns on it. So I would have liked uh, a little bit of a different moment. Hence the all red, I think would have matched a little bit better. That being said, the outfit underneath does look extensive and does look like something specifically made for Theresa May. It's definitely got her stamp written all over it. Even though we're not talking about the performance, I will say that this song is so catchy. I had it stuck in my head for like a good hour after uh, this, the episode even aired. All in all, this was a great talent show for Theresa May with some great fashion moments and it's definitely gonna get a bad. Next up to perform, it's Miss Scarlet Envy. And for her talent show, she decided to wear this outfit that was clearly inspired by old Hollywood. Got the big boa and the beautiful dress with this really slick hair. Going for this old Hollywood look, I think was really smart since her uh, talent was singing. I personally wish there was a little bit more going on. At one point she goes and she touches her breast. So I was expecting some sort of like pop up or some sort of reveal. Additionally, as she's not really moving that much, I think I would have preferred it with like a long gown, just to give you that more of that like stability moment and make it a little bit more fashion. That said, she still looks really great in this. And with singing, you can kind of get away with wearing whatever you want, as long as it's not like a cheap ass dance costume and a cheap ass dance costume, this was not. All in all, her outfit definitely gave a vibe, added to the performance of this old Hollywood set, and definitely made you want to look at her even more. And that is why, for Miss Scarlet Envy, for her talent show look, it is definitely going to be a fab. Next up for the talent show is La Grande Dame, and La Grande Dame is DJing. She's coming out with her mixer and sort of doing a full DJ set and it's so stupid but yet so campy and hysterical. For her outfit she decided to wear a little black dress which gives me very much a Mugler vibe which is very much in the fashion aesthetic that La Grande Dame likes to play. Although the outfit definitely feels like La Grande Dame. I wish she would have went in a different direction. This is feeling very fashion, very runway, and not feeling like DJ at the club. I wish she would have went with more of a DJ outfit. I would have loved to see this in a silver, for example, would have been really cute. And this could have been a fashion moment as well. It makes me think of like when Paris Hilton DJs, she always comes out with a very uh, cunty outfit. 
I, and that's where I think this could have been elevated to a, the next level. Do I like the act? Yeah, I like the act. It was hysterical. Do I like the outfit for this act? No, I don't. And since this is a fashion show and we are judging the fashion and not the act, it is gonna have to be a drab for me. Love the dress, yeah. just not for this yeah. specific act. Next up, it's Gothy Kendall. And Gothy Kendall for her talent show is doing an original song mixed with some fire eating, breathing, thing. As she turns the corner, the first thing I think is, wow, she comes in wearing this latex bodysuit and this beautiful coiffed hair, and it looks expensive. It looks like Gothy Kendall 2.0. The only thing that kind of bothered me initially was the fact that she wasn't wearing any body. With an outfit like this, I think it would have looked better with some boob padding or with some ass padding, just to give her a little bit more of a shape and made it a little bit sexier with this fire. But later she starts touching herself with the fire and you realize that she can't really be wearing that much body because uh, it might be flammable and at least with this attire being so itty bitty it allows her to do her performance. Now her performance itself I think was pretty decent. She did an original song which a lot of people did but she did an extra level by adding this fire breathing. Now, the problem about the fire breathing was that the fire breathing wasn't that good. Especially if you watch the recent season of Drag Race Belgique where uh, Alvida did a uh, fire throwing as well. That was like 10 times better. So it's hard not to compare the two when they aired two days apart. That being said, I do like that she took a chance and I do like that she did something else besides an original song. All in all, the flames with the outfit, with the hair, it looked sexy AF and the outfit definitely fit the performance. And that is why for Miss Gothy Kendall, she is definitely gonna get a fab. Next for the performance, it's Miss Marina Summers. And Marina Summers is doing a full performance. Oh my God. She comes out singing, she comes out dancing, and she comes out looking stunning. Now, people have been telling me, oh, watch out for Marina Summers, watch out for Marina Summers. And when she came out as her entrance look, I was like, what's the big deal? Then she comes and does this. And I was just like, oh my God, I am sold. The song was amazing. Her dance moves were next level. This was like professional level dance moves. And her dress was gorgeous and was, and allowed her to move properly. All in all, this was thought through from head to toe. And it immediately turned me into a Marina Summers fan. And I'm like now thinking to myself, I think I need to go back and watch Drag Race Philippines because if she lost with this amount of talent, I need to see who the hell won. All in all, this was excellent from beginning to end. And I'm... I'm falling in love with this queen already. And even though we are not judging the performance, you can't help but acknowledge how genius and amazing it was. In terms of fashion, she looks stunning, she looks great, and the outfit was made for her to move in. It's giving both fashion and performance attire. She looks like a pop star. All in all, all I can say is fab, 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 fab. Next up, for the talent show is Kata Minaj. Kata Minaj is coming out in this whole Alice in Wonderland vibe. It is definitely a play on her Kata Minaj name, which is a reference to some substances. The whole thing is a little bit creepy, a little bit weird, a little bit avant-garde. Now, I will say that uh, the dress itself is giving the right vibes. The set is giving the right vibes. I don't personally understand this hair with it. Since she was going Alice in Wonderland, I, I wish she would have went with a different hair piece. That being said, this does feel like a Keita Minaj type wig, which is a little bit more of this sort of witchy vibes. At one point she talks about somebody being a mouse in a cat suit and they just turn to like the pit crew. I wish he was dressed as either a mouse or a cat or something because that felt a little bit off. That said, as she's performing, she rips off her wig in the middle of a flip and then she rips off her dress. And I love this. This is giving you two looks in one and it's definitely allowing her to do all of her crazy dance moves and tricks in, which uh, Kata Minaj is known to do. The second outfit isn't as good as the first one, but honestly, it doesn't need to be. She came out strong with a, uh, with a look and then she got into a performance look that she's capable to run around in. All in all, I like that she gave us two looks in one and that she had a whole idea of where she wanted to go with this. And honestly, the performance performance was really good. I thought she was going to be the top two with uh, Miss Marina Summers, so I was surprised to see her just safe. There's no doubt she's getting a fab. 
from me. Next up, it's Mayhem Miller, and Mayhem Miller is doing a sort of comedy meditation. First up, I'm gonna say I love this idea. It is so original, so unique. So many people come on to a Drag Race talent show and do an original song, so to see somebody go in a completely different direction was really refreshing. She comes dressed as like a sort of sound bath master with these bowls and this all white attire, and I am believing the fantasy. She starts to twirl and she starts to say her jokes and they are so intelligent. Unfortunately, she messes up completely on this act and it gets derailed very quickly and becomes an epic fail. But as I said, we are not rating the performance, we are rating the look. And does this look add to the performance? And the answer is yes. Clearly, this was thought through as she wanted to be this master sound bath person, whatever they're called, and she's built this character up, and I love that. I wish she didn't mess up because I really would have loved to see where this performance went because there's not so many places you can do a performance like this. Usually in clubs and bars, you can only sort of do the dance sequence numbers, so I love that she took the opportunity to own the stage with something completely different. All in all, not the best number, but great idea, great look, great vibe, and since we are rating looks and vibes, it is gonna be, have to be a fab. Next up is Hannah Conda. Hannah Conda is coming out in this big pink piano with this pink dress. She definitely looks like a starlet playing her piano and singing her song. Although Hannah Conda does not have the best singing voice, you quickly realize that this is not a singing performance, but in fact, a comedy routine. And we all know that comedy is very hard to do. I love that she did it from this singing perspective to really switch it up a little bit. As she's singing, she's doing her little punchlines and it all works. She looks like a starlet in this old school sort of gown that looks perfect from head to toe. And on top of it, her outfit interacts with her performance, with her punchlines. At one point she says, oh, reveal. And it's not really a reveal and it kind of goes awry, but you can clearly see that it was purposely done. And this is a sort of thing that I'm looking for in a performance where the outfit interacts with the performance and you can clearly see that they were made for one another. And this was clearly one of those things. She looks gorgeous and the outfit was clearly well thought through. And that is why for Miss Hanaconda, she is getting a ah. Next up is Jombers Blonde and Jombers Blonde is doing a lip sync to her own original track. At least I think it's her own original track. It is this fashion posy song. So she struts down the runway in this oversized coat. She rips it off to pose in this long dress. As she walks through, she takes off her long dress and turns into a short dress. Now I love that there's three reveals to give us a little bit more going on, especially when you're not like dancing the house down. You kind of need these reveals. The only problem that I have with the reveals is that they were all kind of the same. I was looking for a little bit of layers in this. If the whole thing you're gonna do is reveal on reveal on reveal, I wish there was more going on. I wish that they would change it up a little bit. It went from the same green to the same green and just a shorter version of the same green. All in all, it wasn't really giving me fashion and it wasn't really giving me reveal and it wasn't really enough for me. I wish if she had gone down this route, she would have done more reveals, maybe a wig reveal, maybe take off some gloves, maybe give us something a little bit more unexpected to add that little uh, camp comedy side that Jombers is a little bit more known for, or actually even reference some of her lines. She mentions her pigeon on there, so wouldn't it have been great if one of the outfits were pigeon? A performance like this is where the fashion really matters uh, because it could add so much to the performance. But all in all, it just wasn't enough, and that is why she's gonna have to get a drab. <laughs> Next up is Arancha Castilla La Mancha, and Arancha is coming out doing this sort of campy comedy number. Now she is lying down on a couch, falling asleep on this man, and she is having like sort of these internal orgasms. I will say that the concept and the performance was really stupid and fun, and I really enjoyed it. Now the question is, did the outfit help the performance? And I don't think it did. 
the dress was very much like this 60s uh, vibe and I'm thinking to myself what does this have to do with anything I wish that had she been doing this like oh I fell asleep somewhere I wish she would have gotten dressed as a sort of a nightgown attire maybe a little bit of lingerie that it would have fit with the theme like oh I'm about to go to bed and I accidentally fell asleep on the couch and I'm having these wet dreams now it just felt like an outfit and a performance and they don't really go together and that's what bothers me this feels like an outfit she had in her closet that she just repurposed for this performance all in all love the performance but the outfit doesn't make sense with it and since the outfit doesn't make sense with it it's gonna have to be a trap <laughs> Next up, it's Tia Coffey, and Tia Coffey is singing for her talent show. She comes out and immediately she looks like a pop princess. This definitely looks like a performance attire and something that she is going to be dancing the house down in. The thing is, she doesn't really dance. She just kind of walks around, which I was like a little bit disappointed to see because with this outfit, I was fully expecting her to like, you know, bust a move. On the flip side, you can see that the outfit was made for this performance because she talks about la 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 lips and she's got lips all over her. So clearly she thought it through. The thing is, I didn't really like the performance. Now I've heard several of Tia's tracks on Spotify and they're actually pretty good. So I was kind of disappointed to see this. It was just kind of like mediocre. When it came to the outfit, I wish there was a little bit more red in it. I wish her hair was a little bit red to pick up the red tones from the lips up to the top. I wish she would have done it with like thigh high boots to give you that sort of hooker pop star fantasy. All in all, it was fine. It was middle of the road. Not my favorite performance, but clearly thought through and an outfit she will probably get a lot of use at. And since we're not judging the performance and we are judging the outfit, it's a pretty good outfit. So she's gonna get a pretty good bow. And that is it for the performances. Oh my, oh my, this is gonna be a tough competition because so many good looks and so many good performances. Now, let's get into the part we've all been waiting for, the runway. And the category on the runway is for queen and country, where queens must give us a look inspired by their country. Before we get into the looks, I think that this is an excellent choice for a first runway. It gets us, the audience, to get to know the queens. It lets them interpret the theme any way that they want. And it gets us to know a little bit more about the countries if you don't know anything about them. So overall, I'm loving this for a first runway. It lets the queens showcase who they are, but in a different way that's not like my typical drag, which we definitely have already seen several times already. So with that said, let's get into these looks. First up on the runway, representing the US of A, it is Scarlet Envy. And Scarlet Envy is showcasing Mount Rushmore, or shall I say, the gay Mount Rushmore. She's coming in with the full Mount Rushmore headpiece with her head right in the middle. And one of them is even RuPaul. Or so she says. She's coming out in this beautiful red gown and it is definitely giving you like a beauty pageant interpretation of a hometown look. It is definitely a choice. I'm surprised she went with Mount Rushmore. The USA has so many iconic things and this is not the first thing that comes to my mind. The good and bad part about it is that once you lose the headpiece, the dress is great on its own and can be used many times. But I say good and bad because I love the dress, but it doesn't feel like hometown. It just feels like a beautiful dress. I would have loved to have seen a whole like USA red, white, and blue, very season 12 promo look, I think would have really done it for me. She says she is referencing Drop Dead Gorgeous and because of that reference, it makes sense and you get her reference. It's just not the reference I personally would have went with. And I wonder how many audience members are old enough to even understand the reference. All in all, she looked great, but it wasn't my favorite. That being said, I can't really fault her for looking great and that's why she's gonna get a soft bag. Next up, representing the Netherlands, it's Miss Keita Minaj. And Keita Minaj is giving us Dutch milk made fantasy. She's coming out as the full traditional cheese maker, but making it high fashion with this giant headpiece and this exaggerated dress. And she looks like a high fashion interpretation and I love it. But Miss Kate Minaj said, I do not have one hometown, but I have 
two hometowns. That is right, because she is an Indonesian living in the Netherlands, she decided to give you two looks. As she gets to the end of the runway, she pulls off her first look to reveal a second look, which is representing Indonesia. When you are a multicultural queen, you always have a struggle of figuring out where you fit in. So why not represent both? And when you do two looks, sometimes one is like way worse than the other. And honestly, both of them were pretty good. So Kaden but Minaj is definitely setting the bar high. All in all, I love this look and I love this interpretation and she is definitely getting a bam. Next up, it's Jombers Blonde and Jombers Blonde is coming in representing Northern Ireland with her green shamrock attire. I love this. All episode I've been saying, I'm not sure that Jobbers is the fashion queen and then she comes out serving this. Is it super high fashion? No, but it is that perfect mix of camp and fashion, which I think is the perfect lane for Jobbers. This feels very elevated, very regional, very on mark and very to the theme. And Jobbers looks really good. All in all, I can't really fault it. And I might I say that Jombers is becoming my dark horse of the season. I wasn't expecting much from her this season and she is turning it up. All in all, for this look, it is definitely gonna be a fab. Next up, representing Spain, it's Arancha Castilla Mancha, and she is coming out in this big hat and this floral dress with all the flowers stuck onto it. It's definitely giving you a eclectic chic. It definitely feels Spanish, but it feels Spanish in only a way that Arancha Castilla can do. Because honestly, we've seen a lot of Spanish influences done on many seasons of Drag Race actually. So it could feel a little bit old and this does not. This feels very interesting, very new and very cool. All in all, I get both uh, Arancha's personality and her heritage in this dress. And it is a little bit over the top, but we're drag queens, so why not make it over the top? All in all, I think this is a pretty good outfit, and for Arancha, it is definitely gonna be a fab. Next up, it's Tia Coffee, and Tia Coffee is coming out representing Nigeria and the UK. She said that she is wearing a Nigerian imprint inspired by the colors of the British flag, the Union Jack. Now, honestly, I didn't get that until she said it. Personally, when you think of the UK, I do think of that red, white, and blue. And this red feels very dark and not as punchy as I would have liked it. As well as I didn't really get much white in it. Initially, I thought she was just representing Nigeria and not the UK, which also threw me off a little bit because we got to know her as a UK queen. I felt like that would have been the reference to go for first. I do really love the hair and I love the bracelets and you can definitely see the culture in that. I don't know enough about Nigerian culture to really critique it to see if it's accurate or not. So I'm just gonna rate it as a look. As a look, this is really great for Tia uh, and it's probably the biggest, best gown she owns, but I'm missing the Tia coffee personality in it. And it almost feels like the dress is wearing her more than she's wearing the dress. And it's for that reason, I'm gonna have to go with a soft drab. <laughs> Next up, it's Marina Summers, and Marina Summers is representing the Philippines, and she is coming out as a very elegant rice farmer. She's coming out in this full beaded outfit and is referencing sort of the traditional farmer's attire, but making it super elegant and fashion. This is beaded to the gods, and it looks elevated AF. All in all, Marina Summers is representing her country and representing her country well. This is how you do a runway and I love it. I love that she was a dark horse coming in and she is coming to play mama. All in all, this is excellent from head to toe and I wouldn't change a thing. And that's why she is getting a fun. Next up, it's Theresa May, and Theresa May is coming out representing the UK. Although a Spanish queen by birth, she calls the UK home. She was known to us through Drag Race UK, so she decided to represent the UK. She said that she is dressed as Britannia, uh, and is coming out in this silver knight's costume, trident, the shield, and the full headpiece. 
All in all, this is very well made and very well thought through. And I think it's an a very original take on the theme and is definitely doing it only in a way that Cheriza does. That being said, I personally don't really love this outfit. You can see that she spent money on it and you can see that it was well made, but it's not really giving for me. I immediately thought of her Spice Girls runway where she did Jerry Spice with the full Union Jack. And I thought that was a better outfit than this one. And so that's kind of where I was struggling with it because um, we've seen her do Union Jacks and we've seen them do, her, do it well. And that was several years ago. So I was expecting a lot more here. Cool concept, not my favorite overall. And that is why I'm gonna have to give it a drab. <laughs> Next up, it's Mayhem Miller, and Mayhem Miller is coming in representing the USA, and she's coming dressed up as the Statue of Liberty. Now, I was a little bit thrown back by this, because although the Statue of Liberty is iconically USA, Mayhem Miller is not a New York queen. She's an LA queen. So I was kind of expecting her to show us LA. That being said, they said, represent your country. And so I guess the Statue of Liberty makes sense. The other thing that also threw me off is the Statue of Liberty. So many queens over the seasons have shown us versions of the Statue of Liberty. So I was surprised that Mayhem would take a stab at such an iconic look that we've seen done time and time again. So the question is, did she do it better than those other queens? And my opinion, yeah, I think she did. She came out uh, swinging and she looks quite amazing, to be honest. Uh, she's definitely giving you a, a very powerful look, a very sexy look, and I appreciate that for Mayhem Miller. Uh, all in all, this is a great showing for her, and despite the fact that she chose the Statue of Liberty and she's not from New York, I'm still gonna have to go ahead and give her a ah. Next up, it's Gothy Kendall, and Gothy Kendall is representing the UK. She's coming dressed up as a interpretation of the Queen's soldier. Now, I love this idea. I think that this is really different for Gothy. First of all, it's a completely different silhouette that we've seen her in. It's definitely going a little bit more conceptual and a little bit more gender fuck, which is quite cool, especially coming from uh, somebody like Gothy Kendall. It's also doing a guard in a different way, one that we haven't necessarily always seen. So I also appreciate that. There is a few things that I would change just to like bring it up that extra level. First is the hat. I wish it was just a little bit taller. It just feels a, a couple of inches too short in my opinion. This is drag, so we should go bigger and more exaggerated. Her outfit, really cute, but it's missing a little something something. I wish she just had a couple of medals to showcase like that, those medals of honor. Uh, I think that would have just elevated a little bit. And then she said that her cape is a deconstructed Union Jack. Honestly, it's just a red, white, and blue stripe. I wish she would have just done a full Union Jack to really tie it in. That being said, I think as a concept, this really works. And as an outfit, it definitely gave me that aha, wow moment. And that is why, even with all those changes for Gothic Kendall, I'm still gonna go ahead and give her a bam. Next up is La Grande Dame, and La Grande Dame is coming out representing France, and she decided to give you a frog and an Eiffel Tower. First up, I love the campiness of it, I love the, the conceptual of it, and it definitely looks elegant and well made. The part that throws me off is, what do these two things have to do together? I wish she had just chosen one, because both of them could be exceptionally great. I just don't get them together. If she had done the Eiffel Tower, she could have been the Eiffel Tower. La Grande Dame is like seven feet tall. She could have definitely pulled it off as like a very like statuesque version of an Eiffel Tower. But personally, I preferred if she went in the frog direction. I think it is a little bit more campy, a little bit more original, a little bit more fun, and uh, definitely would have shown a little bit more personality. To me, this feels like two outfits thrown together and not one look. So it kind of bothers me a little bit. That being said, it is so well done and so original and so unique and so haute couture that I still have to give her a ah. Next up, representing Australia, it is 
Hanaconda. And she's representing the frilled lizard and a little sprinkle of Priscilla, queen of the desert. Uh, she is definitely giving you a drag interpretation of this lizard. And she said that she is also representing the First Nation tribes uh, with this sort of artwork on her neck piece. I love the tribute to the First Nations, especially in um, Australian culture, because similar to Canada's culture, there is a very uh, turbulent past there. So whenever you can honor it, I think it is a great idea. Now let's talk about this lizard costume. I love this lizard. It is one of my favorite lizards. I've been thinking about doing a look inspired by this lizard for a very long time. And I feel like she kind of missed the mark a little bit with it. I love the headpiece, but I would have loved uh, a little bit more. I would have loved some transparency in some of the pieces because it's so that it looks a little bit more skin-like. I would have liked a lot more rhinestones everywhere to give you a little bit more of that shimmer. I feel like the thought is there and the pieces are there, but it's just not executed to the the way I envisioned it and it is just lacking a little bit especially once you compare it to all of these other queens on these runways where the level is so so high that all of these individual details matter and that's how you're gonna stand out all in all for me it just didn't hit the mark enough so I'm gonna have to give it a drab so that is it for this week's extra long first episode I will say that I am already loving this season and I'm so excited to see what is next to come. We've seen so many great looks and you can definitely see that it is elevated. I think this is starting to become already one of my favorite seasons and we're only on episode one. But enough about me, let's get into these looks. I know why you messy bitches are here. You messy bitches are here to find out who had my fabs and drabs of the week. For the entrance look, my drab of the week has to go to... Arancha Castilla-La Mancha. She was the only one that I actually gave a drab to, so I only had one choice. And for the performance look, my drab of the week has to go to... That all down. Beautiful dress, beautiful look, just I didn't feel like it fit her entire theme, um, and that's why she got my drab of the week. And my drab of the week for the runway look goes to... Aww. Anaconda. I love this idea, I love this concept. I just not elevated to the same level everybody else was. So although it was excellent and would have killed on any regular season of Drag Race, we're talking all-stars, baby, so you really have to push it. And it's sad to say that this is the drab because it's already quite excellent. But enough about the negative, let's get into the positive. Who had my fabs of the week? My fab of the week for the entrance look goes to... Tia Coffee. Uh, I don't think that Tia Coffee was the most va 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 voom uh, of the entrance looks, but I like that she was referential to her original look and elevated it. So uh, it showed a full 360 and elevation, which I love to see in an entrance look. And my fab of the week for the performance look goes to Hanaconda. I think Hanaconda looked uh, stunning from head to toe, and I love that her act interacted with her outfit, which just took it up that extra level. And my fab of the week this week for my runway look has to go to Kate Minaj. I loved Kate Minaj because she gave us two looks in one and both of them were excellent. Yes, there might have been some looks that were just as good, if not better, and got five stars as well. But I like that she had two and so it gave us double the fun. With three fabs and three jabs, it gets a little bit confusing. So I decided to do a fab of the week. And my fab of the week this week has to go to Marina Summers. I think that although she didn't get any of my fabs of the week in the individual categories, she aced so many of them and got so many high marks that I cannot let her go unnoticed. She was definitely the winner of this episode and definitely the standout. And I am so excited to see what she has to offer on this season because I think she has a chance to win the entire thing. But maybe I'm counting my chickens too soon. So that is it for this week's episode. Do you agree or disagree with my opinion? Well, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I do read all of them and try to comment on most of them. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button because I am trying to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of this series. Once again, my name is Neon Noir at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms. And I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.